So welcome back. In this video, we're going to list and prove properties of invertible matrices. So we've listed four properties here in the form of a theorem, theorem 5.2.3. And all these properties hinge on the premise here, which is that A and B are invertible n by n matrices. So let's read the first statement together. It says that A inverse, if, if A rather is invertible, then A inverse is also invertible and A inverse inverse equals A. In other words, uh, the inverse of A inverse is A. So that's what we want to show. So let's write what it is that we want to prove. So how do we show that the inverse of A inverse is A? Well, we have to multiply them. So A inverse times A and show that that's equal to I. That's it. That's all there is to uh, this type of proof. And so as most of these proofs, we start from the left-hand side and develop it until we get to the right-hand side. Well, in this case, there's not much to do because A inverse times A is equal to I, and that's by definition, right? So by definition of A inverse, that's it. That's what we wanted to prove, and it's done. So we're ready to look at number two. And number two, let's read it together, says that if A is invertible, then Ka, where K is a scalar, a non-zero scalar, is also an invertible matrix, and its inverse is 1 over K times A inverse. So let's actually write that in words. Um, so this the same thing is saying that the inverse, the inverse of Ka is 1 over k times a inverse. So again, just like in uh, the previous number, if I claim that the inverse of k is 1 over k times a inverse, then I need to show that when I multiply those two matrices, so show that k a times 1 over k a inverse is equal to i. That's what we want to prove. And just like before, we'll start from the left-hand side and we'll develop the expression using possibly properties of matrix multiplication to get to the other side. So here I'm going to use, I'm going to list some properties here on the right hand side. Properties. And so I'll just list the ones I'm going to use. If you uh, look back in your notes um, on matrix multiplication, you'll find a property that says that if I have A times K times B, where K is a scalar, then you notice here in this statement, the K is in front of the second matrix. Well, the property says I can put it in front of the first matrix and that will be the same. So where K is you could say where k belongs to r. So this is a property. Uh, if you look back in your notes on matrix multiplication, you'll find that property. So let's apply that here. So the k in this property, the constant I want to apply that to is this 1 over k in front of the a inverse. And the property tells me I can take this 1 over k and move it completely to the front and multiply it by k times a. And then it leaves me with a inverse here. Okay, so I applied that property uh, in order to move the 1 over k to the front. But of course, I think we can see that the next step we'd like to do is multiply 1 over k times k. Well, luckily we can do that too, because if you look back in your properties on um, multiplication by a scalar, you'll find a property that says that if you have two scalars, like this, well, you can actually multiply the scalars first by each other, and then times a. Okay, and this is where, uh, you know, add where k and l are real numbers. So that's a property that you'll find in the section for uh, multiplication by scalar. And so that simply tells me that I can do this, right? I can do 1 over k times k first, and then times a times a inverse. And of course, we're done, because 1 over k times k is 1. a times a inverse is i, by definition, and that, of course, is just the matrix i. That's what I wanted to show. And so again, it's simply showing that the product of the matrix and the one we claim is its inverse is equal to i, and we do that by applying properties of multiplication and multiplication by scalar. So we're ready to look at number 3. And so let's scroll back up and look at number three. And again, three says that if A is invertible, then A transpose is also invertible, and its inverse is A inverse transpose, i.e., what we're saying is that the inverse, the inverse of A transpose is A inverse transpose. And we know that this exists, right? A inverse transpose, because the premise was A is invertible. So A inverse exists, and then we can transpose it. And so again, this simply means that we need to show so show that the product of A transpose times A inverse transpose is equal to I. And we'll do that again by using properties. And so if I write A transpose times A inverse transpose, I'm going to use another property here. If you think back at properties of the transpose, you might remember a property that says if I have A times B transpose, that's the same as B transpose A transpose. Right? Uh, so if we apply that property, but from right to left, right? so these are our two matrices, 
uh, each one is transposed. We can write this as just one big product, all transposed, but we have to flip the order of the matrices. So this will be equal to that. And that, of course, is A inverse times A is I transpose. And, of course, I transpose, if you think of the matrix I, it's a symmetric matrix. So if you transpose it, you get I again, which is exactly what we wanted. And that proves number three. And finally, we're left with number four. So let's read that together. Number four says that if A and B are invertible matrices, then AB, this product, is invertible. And the inverse is B inverse times A inverse. So you notice that we reverse the order. So again, this means the inverse, the inverse of AB, of this matrix AB, is the matrix B inverse A inverse. And so if that's the claim, then we need to show, just like for all the others, that the product of those two matrices, so show that, show that AB times B inverse A inverse, this matrix, this product rather, is equal to I. So let's do that. So I'm going to do some special effects here by using a third color. So I'll use A and I'll use red rather. So I'll say um, AB. Here, let's see if I can do this without messing this up. Uh, times B inverse a inverse, right? I want to expand this, develop this statement, and show that it's equal to i. So the reason I use those uh, red brackets is because I want to use a property here, which is the associative property, and I'll write it over here on the side. So you might remember, again, from matrix multiplication, that if I have a times b times c, I can multiply a, b first, but that is the same as if I multiply b and c first, right? That's called the associative, associative property of matrix multiplication. And I'm going to use that here. So basically, these first red brackets are what I'm going to move. And uh, actually, sorry, let me do this differently. So what I want to do is I want to move the brackets, the red brackets. Instead of the first two matrices, I want to multiply B times B inverse A inverse. And then I can do that again inside the red brackets. I can again multiply or apply rather the associative property and that will give me b times b inverse times a inverse and there we go so that was the purpose of my red brackets to be able to follow the associative property and that will simply give me a times i times a inverse because b times b inverse is i and that will do the trick because i times a inverse is a inverse, and so we have A times A inverse, that of course is equal to I, which is what we wanted to show. Okay, so um, we've proven all four properties. Let me recap them again. Uh, so you have them here, and we're going to be using these properties in some examples in the next video. But before we do that, let me just skip ahead for just one moment to the remark at the end of page 118, because the remark simply states that the property we just showed, uh, the property where we showed that the product of two matrices is invertible, uh, well, we can extend that to three matrices, right? Uh, if you have matrices A, B, and C, which are three invertible matrices, then the product A, B, C is invertible, and its inverse is the product of the inverses in reverse order. Um, and so we won't prove that right away, but we'll be proving it in one of the Zoom exercise sheets. Okay, the proof is basically applying the property twice. And we can generalize that even more and say that if you have any number, let's say k matrices, well, the product of those k invertible matrices is also going to be invertible, and the inverse is simply the product of the inverses in reverse order. Okay, And so in the next video, we're going to use these properties and apply them to some exercises.